You know, I'd never heard of Noon Instruments or Tosca before they reached out to me and asked if I wanted to check out this library. And it's funny because it feels like they knew exactly what my jam was. This contact library is full of analog synth goodness and morphing textures and all sorts of fun stuff and I definitely dig it and I want to share what it can do with you today. Hey, my name is Steve and welcome back to Command Shift New. I love that warm, cinematic, analog synth sound mixed with orchestral and other organic textures. And if any of you are familiar with my music or are familiar with this channel, you will know that. When Noon Instruments sent me Tosca, I had no idea what it was. So I, I checked out their website and videos and wow, I, I fell in love. But does the instrument actually live up to this expectation? Today I want to share my thoughts on this library from the things that I like and the things that I didn't like so much and give you an idea of what it feels like to actually use this library. While Noon Instruments did send me this copy through, they don't have any control over the content that I post and aren't sponsoring this channel. So I am free to provide an honest review for you. So let's get into it. The first thing that I have to mention has got to be this fantastic sound. This library is made up of analog synths, but also brass, strings, woodwinds, vocals, and field recordings, all sort of processed in a very unique way. I think I spent most of my time in the curated presets, but I also found fondness within the relic presets as well, which are some of these textures, but reprocessed through tape and other aged analog equipment to give that awesome kind of quality of low fineness and scratchiness and age wear and tear, making those original samples even more interesting and useful. Check out some of these sounds. I also love the LFO system, or what they call Pulse. It's such an ingeniously simple system that just makes sense. There are two LFOs, which you can control the speed, the wave type, and the depth, and then you can assign it to different effects and controls within the instrument, like the amp, the cutoff, or the wash. This makes it really easy to jump in and customize, particularly if you're a beginner with any kind of like synthesis or sampling, and don't really want something overly complicated. One thing to mention though that isn't so good, and, and this is on some of the presets that aren't using the Pulse or LFO feature, Feature. The pulse rate or speed is set to 8 over 1. That's 8 quarter notes or crotchets, which is like saying 2 bars of 4-4 four, four times. So you might sit there adjusting the LFO thinking that it's set to 8 notes or something like that, but you completely missed that it said 8 over 1, and now you're finding it weird that it doesn't seem to be pulsing quickly or at all. Well, that, that would be why. <laughs> A small gripe, but you know, worth noting because it definitely threw me off as I was sort of racing through the controls trying to find my way and get sounds sort of down, particularly as you're in that kind of composition producing type mindset, you know? The other thing that I love is just how creative you can get with the effects and controls on the interface. There are some really cool effects that sound just gorgeous and can really alter the sound and the whole thing from what a preset was into something that's entirely different. So I would definitely recommend experimenting with this one. The presets are fantastic, but the controls just take it like to a new level. Now, one thing that was kind of like, meh, sort of like, okay, was the interface, I felt. There are aspects that are really beautifully designed, like the colors and the kind of like 
eclipse design that they've got sort of with these colored circles. But it also feels a bit flat sometimes too with like this oversimplified layout type feel. The main reason I didn't fully love it though was really that some of the controls are labeled in what I would say are more creative ways than labeling them standard things like reverb time or decay. This kind of creative way of labeling things that is different to what you're actually controlling isn't immediately obvious to what you are actually controlling. This could have been helped with like a manual, like a user manual or like little help messages that appeared in the bottom bar, you know, when you hovered over the control. I know that's something that you can do inside contact. You can script it that way. I've done a video on it. So that sort of thing would have been helpful if they wanted to use those more kind of unconventional labels. But it is all right and, I, and the interface is still useful. Now there is one thing that I didn't like and that was that I had some stability issues. Now it is worth mentioning of course that it isn't impossible that this is down to my computer and my setup but I didn't have any other problems with any other libraries of contact or even logic in the same session. For some reason there was just when I went opening and closing presets really quickly searching for sounds as you do inside contact, contact just sort of stopped responding within Logic Pro and would eventually come up saying the plugin is frozen and it would I like to recover it. Sometimes the recovery worked, sometimes Sometimes Logic just kind of crashed, but either way, pretty frustrating. I didn't lose any work because of Logic's Pro's pretty good, you know, pre-save feature. But when I opened up the project again and opened up that track and contact within it, it, the, it was just blank. So it seemed like whatever I loaded in there before just didn't kind of seem to work and it just spat the dummy. So I'm not sure exactly what is causing this, but if it is a stability concern, I, I do hope that Noon Instruments is going to be updating this. Having said that, when the library was actually loaded and I was just using it as an instrument and recording with it, nothing went wrong. It was really just during that preset stage when I was searching for a preset. Okay, so there's one more thing that I want to talk about, and that is how does it actually feel to use? How is it like to compose with? As I often do, I compose a track, I try to make it entirely that sort of instrument and that sound and see how well it can do and where its strengths are. And I have to say, it is really easy to score with Tosca. You can immediately create some very beautiful textures with this one. Every key you press is just layering on new things. It's like painting with sound. It works by itself really, really well, and that's awesome. But it does, I think, combine well with other instruments. And I think there's one critical reason why you might want to combine it with other instruments and I want to show you in my track that I created. It's very easy with Tosca to get carried away with the stereo effects, the wide sounds and frankly a lot of the presets already have such wide sounds that encompass such a lot of space. That's not a bad thing of course, that sounds beautiful on headphones for example, but there is such a thing in mixing known as the sort of mono compatibility, the ability to fold both left and right speakers together into a mono signal. For instance if you're playing through an older phone or a radio or something it might only come through as a mono signal. Of course I'm writing a film score piece and that's usually in stereo so it doesn't really matter in this case. But mono compatibility could be an important factor and Tosca isn't really well designed for that. Let me show you what I mean. If I just hit play and I'm not going to bother with any of the sound, we're going to take a look at this sound field down here. You can see some sounds are really really good and they are mono compatible but quickly it's going and spending a lot of time down here in the negative one. And that's because so many of these sounds are spread out. Now as I said if you're always intending a stereo source it's not going to really be a problem but it is something to be aware of I think. Worth kind of mentioning here at the end. So I hope you enjoyed this look and review of Tosca and found it useful. If you want to check it out I will leave a link below. It isn't any kind of affiliate link it's just there for your convenience. If you want to check out more software reviews and music production tips or even find out how to build your own contact library or instrument why not subscribe to this channel and let me know if you liked this video with a quick thumbs up. So subscribe on your way out but otherwise I will catch you in the next one.